Hoso maoni wirk, wai wainen kitane ni mua e joski pietaya pos notaman e yum MITW podcast. A jospis pietaya pos napi notaman e ne hisikimaka e joso matname neho kihi. Wisconsin podcast. We are your hosts, Gary Dodge and Sheena Wapus. On this episode, we are joined by guest Von Bowles, public information officer for the Menominee Indian Tribe of Wisconsin. Uh, before we begin, I would like to remind people that we request that you send in your COVID-19 related questions to us at podcast at MITW.org. Welcome, Vaughn. Morning. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. Um, so, Vaughn, this week, again, the vaccine talk every week, it seems. Uh, yeah, it's the hot topic. <laughs> um, so this week we saw that the UK vaccine was approved. So can you talk about why that was approved um, before the US vaccine was approved? Yeah, so it the UK um, approved the vaccine developed by Pfizer and BioNTech. Um, that was actually one of the programs or projects that was funded by um, the Trump administration's Project Warp Speed and stuff. Um, it looks like the FDA um, could have emergency approval for the same vaccine um, sometime after December 10th, a couple of days after that is what they're thinking. Mainly it comes down to filing dates um, and times that, you know, Pfizer and, and BioNTech were able to meet with various um, leaders of, you know, uh, oversight boards and committees. Um, right now, they're going to be able to release 50 million doses in the month of December. Um, a lot of those are slated for U.S. distribution. Um, and Pfizer's actually commented how they're working on a, a second generation of the vaccine already. Uh, because right now, the, the vaccine they have has to be stored um, between negative um, 20 and negative 100, depending on, you know, which type or, or batch you get. And so they're trying to uh, create one that can be shelf stable at room temperatures that make distribution easier across the globe and stuff, especially since, you know, a freezer that's at negative 100 is kind of specialized equipment. Um, and so they're, they're, you know, going to be able to release it here in the U.S. Um, fairly soon from, from what it looks like. Um, UK was just first ones to jump on it. So the vaccine, the vaccine will start coming uh, to the reservation sometime in December. Um, we've been working with the state for distribution of that. Um, right now, it's looking like our healthcare workers um, and residents in our CBRF will be the first ones to get the doses on the reservation, and then we're going to take it to the wider community. Um, but there's still a lot of unknowns about which version of the vaccine we'll be getting um, and then, you know, timing for that. But uh, the talks and the plans are definitely in work for that. So that's where we are with vaccine news across the globe and, and, and locally. Cool. Thank you for the update. <clears throat> yeah. So um, are we seeing a, a rise in cases after the Thanksgiving holiday? So not yet, um, which is good. Uh, right now we have kind of a local dip in like the seven day running average. Uh, this may be due to the testing that was involved. You know, some facilities were closed. So we may see what could be called a statistical spike, um, you know, in the, in the coming days as, you know, those facilities get back to testing and, you know, take care of the backlog. Um, we might see some actual spiking uh, from Thanksgiving, but we probably won't be certain about that until about 14 days afterwards and stuff. That's that's the time we'll know whether or not, you know, the majority of the public is in the clear or whether or not, you know, there were gatherings that, that spread it around. So um, we'll just have to keep our eyes open and we'll definitely keep everyone posted about, you know, how things went over the Thanksgiving holiday. So um, this week we also saw that the CDC changed their guidelines for quarantine. Is that something that we're also changing as well or following? So yeah, the CDC uh, changed their guidelines by shortening the kind of the potential window that people need to quarantine. Um, and that is something the tribe technically could follow. Um, however, you know, under the recommendations of Dr. Schlegel, we're going to wait and see what um, the state of Wisconsin adopts um, first, partly because we have so many cases um, going on nationally. We're one of the big hotspots right now. And so we don't want to jump into changing our quarantine procedures um, and accidentally letting out 
more of the virus into the population, which would be super unfortunate in what we're trying to prevent. So right now, we're going to see how those changes in guidelines affect other states and other part of the country. Should you go back to work if you've had a negative test result, but it's been less than 10 days since you've been exposed? I would definitely say that depends on when you were tested. You know, if you were tested before that four to five day window, you may have what's considered a false negative, meaning, you know, there wasn't enough virus to build up to be detected, in which case you, you know, potentially could infect people. Um, if you're in that position, you're definitely going to need to talk with your healthcare provider, um, you know, monitor if you have symptoms develop, when they appear, when they've stopped. Um, and you'll also want to talk to your supervisor and stuff about returning to duties. Uh, the, a lot of a lot of quarantine and work related issues uh, have been left to, you know, department heads and supervisors um, because there are, you know, opportunities to work remotely. Some people are needed on site, and so it really depends on what's needed um, of your position. So I can't give you a definite answer on that one. Really sorry. <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to though. You have to use your catchphrase um, at least once a week, though. I, you're right. You're right. I, I do need to say it depends. Will there be a second uh, round of COVID checks for tribal members, and is there an application process? I haven't heard of a second round of checks um, in the works yet. It's not to say that there's not. Uh, that would definitely be up to you know MTL to decide. Um, if there is, we can we can let you know at this point. We've seen multiple COVID deaths amongst Menominees recently. How important is it to follow the guidelines by CDC and other safety protocols and tips that the tribe puts out? And can you go over the important ones? Yeah, so it's it's really important right now. Um, just so everyone knows, we've had uh, 16 tribal members that have died. Not all of them have lived on the reservation, but it is really affecting our, our community um, and impacting a lot of families now. Um, so I would suggest or, you know, indicate that it's of kind of the highest importance that people really consider some of the recommendations and safety precautions that the CDC has been talking about. Um, for a long time, you know, our community has been known as having the highest rate of, you know, comorbidities in a lot of different uh, areas, you know, things like high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, um, smoking rates, and things like that. All of those can drastically negative impact um, how effective your body is at fighting off uh, a, a COVID infection. And so um, we really want people to take this seriously. Um, they really got to be honest with themselves about, you know, how healthy they are and how healthy the people in their household are as well. So, you know, if, if people are, are diagnosed um with with COVID-19 and haven't met, uh, you know, some of the criteria for, for being released yet, we'd really like them to to consider the health of others and stay quarantined. Um, if, you, if you've had 10 days um, without symptoms since your, your first diagnosis, that's good. That um, shows you're on the, on the sign to recovery and, and should be able to return to your normal, you know, I guess, quarantine normal, pandemic normal uh, life, um, you know, soon. Uh, one of the things they say is you shouldn't have a, a, an increase in symptoms or you shouldn't have to take fever-reducing medicines to get to that point. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if you haven't been diagnosed, it's the same thing we've been talking about for a long time of, you know, hand-washing, getting sleep and plenty of, you know, fluids into your system get vitamins into your body. Those all help your immune system function properly. Um, you know, eat healthy, things like that. Wash hands. Um, frequently sterilize surfaces that are touched by a lot of people. Doorknobs, computers, um, obviously the bathroom. Um, also, you know, when you're out, maintain social distance of, you know, six feet from people. Um, mask wearing is still mandated by state law. Um, as well as tribal regulations. So that's something you'll need when you go out. If you're going out, you know, consider whether you're going to be in an open area or an enclosed space um, and how many people might be there. That's Those may be the two biggest factors at this point is whether you're going to be indoors with large groups um, outside of your regular household uh, for exposure um, and duration of time. Think about how long you're going to be around others that don't normally live with you. Those are the main things we should be thinking about right now. 
um, especially with the the Christmas holidays coming up, there is a, a, a very lengthy list of recommendations put out by the CDC that really focus on just about every type of contingency or scenario for contracting COVID. Um, and we can we can link to those recommendations in the show notes. Um, and I would recommend that everyone go take the time to read those. Um, I think you'd fall asleep if I read them here. But um, it's definitely good information to have and to think about. Um, and so really, really be aware of who you're around this holiday season and really try to keep your health, your health and your family's health um, at the forefront. I mean, we're we're close. The vaccines are being released at this point. Um, most of them are 95% effective, which is an absolute amazing um, accomplishment by modern medicine. Um, please try to keep yourself and your and your community healthy a little bit longer, so we can all get out of the woods together. Why well, in for listening to the Menominee Indian Tribe of Wisconsin podcast? You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can also listen to the podcast on menominee-nsn.gov under the community tab. Keep up to date by following us on Facebook at MITW Podcast. We do weekly updates with Vaughn and welcome any community questions you have regarding COVID-19. Please send them in to us via email at podcast at mitw.org.